we started looking at structure of a phrase, right? First we looked at what is a phrase, how do we make a phrase, how do words group together to make a constituent and which in turn becomes a phrase. How do we name a phrase? And then now we are looking at what is the structure of a phrase. How do we name a phrase? How do we name a phrase? Why do we name a group of word a noun phrase? Everything relates to noun. The most important part of that phrase is noun and everything uh, determiner and some other components are directed towards noun, therefore a noun phrase okay? and likewise for everything else. Then we started looking at uh, structure of a phrase and in which we saw that uh, uh, the structure is such that we have this. This is going to be the structure of a phrase. Now, I, I want to take you a little bit back into uh, to, to put the whole thing into historical perspective. So, first we looked at what we said phrase structure rule, right? Understand this? We looked at this thing and we said this is phrase structure rule. This gives us, this is a blueprint of a sentence. This is how we get a sentence in every language, right? So, this was, this was nice, but merely in a statement of a sentence. Okay. Then the next step was when it was looked at as, so for example, if we have an NP and this had let us say a determiner and N, okay. so structurally this was represented as determiner and N. Okay. The point here was or, or what was missing from here was both of them were equally, both of them were equal, they had equal status. So the criticism of this was why do we, why do we need to make it so fancy stuff like structure and trees, we, we can do it with a bracket. And we still know this is a phrase. So, what is the need? What is the need of this thing? Because if there were three constituents in a phrase, then they will go for three. If there were four, they will go four. So, there was no restriction on branches. See the, see the point? So, a sentence was given like uh, you have a sentence it was given like an NP and VP and then again VP was V, NP, PP. Okay? So, the, the, the problem was it, was it was capturing some of the things, but again for many things it was putting in such a way which sounded more or less like in a statement. Therefore, little later it became like this one, where the idea was we are going to have only multi, only binary branching and then we came up the this, this notion came up and this is why this whole thing is known as X bar theory, okay? X bar theory. As you can see, we have a phrase and then we have head of that phrase. There is no such category as X bar, it is just a 
hypothetical node for giving us binary branch all right and this is this this is the place for which is called a specifier place in which we put things like determiner and and some other stuff whatever is whatever qualifies to be a specifier and this place is going to be a place which is called complement okay this is the place which is going to be called complement uh Let me show you a one more, once more a sentence uh, before I talk about a specifier and complement. So, everything making sense on this slide? We have a sentence and then we are just giving its categorical description in terms of what we have seen, right? A sentence is students of physics like pizza with their friends, sorry? We, I have removed to eat from here. Is that a good sentence still? They like pizza. Okay. Uh, take, take this sentence as, uh, can, can you write this down, this sentence? Uh, I, I think I intended some modification in this. I did not do. Students of physics like pizza in the evening. Okay. Students of physics like pizza in the evening. This one, like this one. Okay, students of phys phys I the the idea is we I mean we can add students of physics like to eat pizza with their friends in the evening. That's not a problem. The idea is I wanted to simplify the sentence for you to see some other stuff. Okay. Is this phrase structure okay? Can you can you qu quickly check for this sentence? The sentence is NP and VP. NP is N and PP, and then VP is V NP and PP, right? And then NP is again N and PP, and PP is a P and NP. Is that is that? Are these rules of phrase structure? Describing the sentence before, pay attention to this carefully, and if you have any doubts or a question, please let me know. Do you do you agree and understand that students of physics is a is the subject of this sentence? The whole thing not the students, but the students of physics is the subject of this sentence, right? which is an NP, but this NP has a PP in it. Right? This is why the first NP is N and PP. When you see, a, when you see the VP, you have an a V and NP, which is like an pizza is NP and then in the evening is PP. Can I can I move? Is this okay? Sir? Yeah. VP equal to V and P and PP. Mm -hmm. The V is for like. Right. The pizza is NP. Right. And in the evening is PP. Right. So we should have one more that NP is just equal to N because there the noun phrase does not have two parts, noun is just a single pizza. Uh, yes, you can do that. That that's also possible. But how about no, you are you are in you are in a way right. But I am trying to put it as pizza in the evening as NP. V and NP alone. There is a reason why I am putting an NP there and this is why I said you are right. You are right when you are saying that 
n piece would be just n you are right but uh, the reason why i was putting here as np as n and pp is because i am putting pizza in the evening together but again uh, again you are right that in that case it should be just v and np you are absolutely right i i am i am glad that you are following this but i want to make a distinct i the reason why i am putting np and pp both there okay is because i want to want you to see and in the following uh, few minutes that there is a distinction between pizza and in, and in the evening which is to say now let's let's backtrack a little bit the verb like let's look at the nature of the verb like is this a transitive verb or intransitive verb sure should not be any nobody should have any confusion it's a transitive verb right the moment we say it's a transitive verb is it going to have an object right most of the time objects are np's okay so therefore that np pizza is the object of this this verb phrase this verb in the evening is not the object it's an additional component in the verb phrase it's part of the verb phrase but it's not not uh, the object of the verb it getting this point it's not the object of the verb what we are saying again is subject verb and object where verb decides about about its object these are the required things in a sentence we could we could have more parts of a sentence more components in a sentence but they are going to be merely additional information therefore in the evening in order to retain simplicity of this sentence i could have just dropped in the evening and given you a pure bare sentence but i want to make this point that pizza is the object of this verb like which is a required element in the sentence whereas in the evening is not a required element in the sentence okay that that doesn't that doesn't negate what you were saying what you you, you get my point you are right but the the reason why i am putting this pp here is for that reason okay now uh see uh, i have put a uh, term here called recursion okay you understand the meaning of recursion okay uh uh okay i'll i'll talk about recursion why why i put recursion here let me later let me go back to the uh, recursion is a okay let me briefly mention it recursion is a property of phrases okay and phrases have this recursive nature and recursion is also one of the properties of a phrase or a sentence which can give you infinitely long sentences okay and again we will come back to this and talk about them later also there is a reason why i wanted to put a bigger as a, a subject of this sentence as a bigger phrase okay uh, and i am going to show you that part also in a in a moment so let's let's look at this this is what i was trying to do here now look at this this okay and again uh, what the the questions that both of you were raising is not taken care of in this sentence this is exactly the exactly what you have seen before it's just giving you phrases making sense now there's just one additional point that i want to make through this is when we say sentence okay and and this is going to be more more significant when we discuss little bit more about phrase structure sorry little bit about x bar theory that what we said sentence here this is also a phrase by itself okay and some people call it ip some people call it tp and some people will call it 
AGRP. Do these terms make sense to you? AGRP is agreement phrase, TP is uh, tense phrase and IP means inflectional phrase. Can you, if, if you are taking notes, which I sincerely encourage you to do, can you please take a note of these things? These are important terms. Uh, IP is inflectional phrase, TP means tense phrase and AGRP means agreement phrase. At the same, uh, same point, I can also tell you that in the second chapter of the book that I have sent you, these phrase structural rules are, are described. So, you can, you can also take a look at uh, chapter 2 of the textbook. Uh, again, a brief note on IP, TP and AGRP. I, I think they should follow from the discussions that we have done so far. Right? What is the, okay, let, me, let me put it this way. Remember two types of things we have seen, lexical categories and functional categories. Words like uh, student, physics, pizza, like, evening, these are lexical categories. And then we saw functional categories like agreement, tense, aspect, aspect the part of, agree, part of agreement was uh, number, person, gender, all such sometimes together or individually are functional categories. So, the the reason why a sentence is called an IP is all these functional categories together is called inflection. Okay. These are, they represent themselves in terms of inflection on different components in a sentence. So, the, the idea is some people consider agreement as the most important part of the sentence. That is, without agreement you do not have a sentence. Therefore, sentence equals to an agreement phrase. At the same time, some people consider tense as an important part of a sentence. That there are two types of sentences. One could be tenseless sentence and the other is sentences with, it, with, with tense and that is an, an important part. Some third group came up and combined the two. So, both tense and agreement are part of inflection, they are functional categories, they are part of inflection. So, so there is not much of an advantage of calling one over the other, let us put them together and call it an inflectional phrase. In other, in other words, ten sentence is the whole, whole idea of a sentence is not about a lexical item or it is different lexical, lexical uh, items like students, physics like pizza or evening. The idea of a sentence is about its underlying hidden characteristics, hidden features such as functional properties and therefore these names. Clear? Okay. So, uh, and we will reach IP, TP, all these things when we are done with the X, X bar. It is all taken care of into X bar and I will show you that when we reach the sentence level. Now, this is what we have been looking at. So, when we say, when we look at this part, so I can, I can get rid of this also. It is the, the, the point that I discussed here, is this clear to you? That this was a phrase structure rule in historical context around 65. Little later, this was not adequate. People started talking about a structural structures of a phrase, but the structural description was not adequate enough to capture every everything that people wanted to say, or they came up with more stuff. So these things became historically little bit insignificant. Where we stay now is this. Okay. So here we have specifier and head and a complement. The, the thing is, this, wh what do you see here? This gives us, we have already talked about this, this part and I, I think I have repeated this enough of times, so that you understand the 
requirement and function of function of this part. Look at this. Structurally, specifier is higher than its head and complement both. Making sense? Structurally, specifier is higher than its head and complement, which means whatever is the structure, whatever is the is the is going to be the specifier or determiner has a scope over this whole thing. So, a specifier does not simply belong to noun. In a phrase, it is specifying everything that is under its scope. And this thing is nicely captured by this hierarchical configuration. Okay? Second part which is important is complements are always going to have sister relationship with its head. So, if something is a complement to the head, it is it it is always going to be in close relationship which is this is called sister relationship. By, by sister relationship it simply means both of them have equal status. Okay? So, what we have been looking at so far as an object, right? I come to that when we are talking about a VP, but since we have been looking at transitive verb and object of a verb. So, let us let me give you an example from there and then I come back to NP. Okay? The complement of a verb, sorry, the object of a verb is called the complement of a verb. Okay? If there is a complement, it is going to come here. If this is a VP, then this is V and this is where you, you are going to have the NP. Okay? If there is no comp no object in the verb, so in the in a sentence like like and pizza are going to be in this configuration. Imagine you have a verb which does not have a complement okay? and has something else. For example, uh, let us say can, can you give an example of a verb which does not have a have an object? Uh, yeah, go ahead. You mean the full? No, no. That that that's true. This, the verb sleep is an intransitive verb and it will not have a complement, right? But I want something more. It has something else. Uh, okay. Take the verb sleep and put it as sleeping in the evening. Okay, John was sleeping in the evening. Is there an is there an object in this sentence? No. So, in that case, sleep is the head of this phrase and there is no complement. Now, the PP in the evening is not the complement of that verb. Okay? The PP in the evening is not the complement of the verb. Therefore, you do not get a PP here. You do not get a PP here. Are you, are you with me? Did you, do you see this thing? Now, the, the, the point I am saying, I am making is, it is not that a PP cannot be a complement. In some cases, where a PP will be the object of the verb or the complement of the verb, then only it can come in this place. In the cases where a PP is not the complement of a verb like this one, it is not going to come in this place. Then it has to go somewhere else. Right now, I am not showing you where, but it has to go somewhere else. This is the significance of this position. In a, in a X bar configuration, I am trying to show you the significance of this position complement. In this position, either you will, you will have only a complement or nothing. This position can stay vacant, but it does not allow anything else. Therefore, the head and its complement are going to be in equal sister relationship. 
this much making sense to everybody and specifier and rest of the two the specifier and head and complement are in hierarchical relationship. This notion is captured nice this this fact is nicely captured with binary branching ok. Any question? Any difficulty? Oh, the sentence will be was sleeping, right? Okay, we right now, yes, we can put was sleeping. But the reason why I put only sleep here because was goes somewhere else. Let me let me come to that that level and then you will say it, it goes somewhere else. But for the time being, we can say yes, this whole thing is the verb. So it is stage here. Okay? All right, very nice. Now, uh, so let us let us look at this this one, the subject that we had in this sentence and then we go to the sentence level. This is this is the subject that we have, right. Students of physics like pizza in the evening, this is the subject we have. This is the subject is an NP and this is how that NP is represented. Please pay attention to this, to the fact that of physics is the complement of the noun student, okay. Why is it a complement is, is what I will show you, is, is what I will discuss with you, okay. And how do we know that this is a complement? Why just now we saw in the previous example, I, I do not have everything on the slide, in the previous example that John was sleeping in the evening, in the evening which is also a PP, is this a PP in the evening which is also a PP is not a complement. In this case of physics which is also a PP, we are saying this is a complement. So, there has to be a logical grounding on the basis of which we can say some PPs are complements and some PPs are not. This decision cannot be arbitrary. This decision cannot be, okay, this let us consider this PP as complement. Let us consider certain PPs as not complement. The, the things that are not complement in this structural configuration are called adjuncts. Adjuncts, okay. So, some PPs are complements and some PPs are adjuncts. There has to be a reason why some PPs are complements and some PPs are adjuncts. I will show you that as well. Now, this is a PP of physics. This is how we get. In this configuration, of is the head of this phrase being a preposition and physics is an NP complement of this preposition of. Clear? And there is no specifier. So, from these two structures, you can see we have positions of <coughs> in every phrase, we have position for three things, specifier, head and a complement. Head is a required thing, only then you have a phrase, okay. But sometimes you may have a complement, sometimes you may not have a complement. Sometimes you will have a specifier, sometimes you will not have any specifier. Okay. In this case, you have both specifier and complement, both are available in this phrase, the student of physics. When we talk about PP of physics, there is no specifier. Okay. How, if we go in recursive fashion and break down this P, NP complement in this structural configuration, what do we have and what do we not have? Quickly, we have no complement and do we have a specifier? No specifier. Do you understand this question and answer everybody? Yes, no? Do not don't be shy, please tell me. If the, the answer is correct, but I am just trying to make sure that everybody and follows the question and the answer both. Okay? All right. This is what, what we call and this is why we call them X bar. 
this is how we get the whole whole uh, uh, whole phrase. So physics has no specifier and no complement in the example you just showed. Yes. The, the, so what I am saying is, if you break this down further, see, see the in this phrase, what is the head of and the complement is and which is an NP, right? If we give its full configuration of that NP, of that NP then in the specifier position you have nothing and in the complement position also you have nothing. So, why did not you just call it N? That is what I, that is what we are trying to say and N can also be the full NP and N can also be full NP. This, this is, this is precisely what we were trying to, trying to show you and in the phrase structure rule. Even, so, so this, this possibility was not, po not available in phrase structure rule. Here, we can show clearly that through, through the, re through recursive fashion that, see, we have a PP, we have P, okay, and then we have another NP which will have an N, all right. Now, of physics, this is how we actually get it. We can have, we can put further things like Get this thing? So, we have a, we have an NP students of physics. This is how we get the whole structure, the students of physics. If we want to say the, the student of physics, then this is how we get. The, the point is, and now I am putting everything together. The point is, sometimes in a phrase you are going to have a specifier. Sometimes in a phrase you are going to have complement. Sometimes you may have nothing, neither a specifier, neither a specifier nor a complement. Nonetheless, that position is not killed, the position is still active. Okay? So, what, what we do is when we are giving the structural representation, instead of leaving several empty positions, we put it the way you see it on the, on the screen. Should not be complicated for you? Right? This, this is why we end up there. We, we do not even write complement. The, the whole point of putting the word complement and the specifier is for you to understand that what those things are. And since we are looking at them for the first time, we are putting them. Otherwise, we are going to take it as a given thing that the is a specifier. Okay? Anything else here? No, since, since we are talking about uh, 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 the structure, I want to move little bit further in the structure and then come back to the whole notion of uh, why some PPs are complements and why some are not, that is some are adjunct. We are going to, I am going to come to that notion little later. Uh, So, we, we get this thing uh, clarified, any, nobody has any question any, or any doubt here, right? Now, I want you, let me go back to my sentence, uh, I want you to draw the structure for P, the whole VP, like pizza in the evening. Can, can can you try drawing that?
can I can I delete this part? Is this clear to everybody? So that we have more room on the board. None. So how do I how do I begin? If I have to talk about VP, how do I begin? We will have a specifier, nice, and then we have here V bar, right? And then we are going to have V and NP, fine? So we get V is our, it's, it's only like, but for the time being I am putting it as likes okay and our np is again it can be expanded further but we only have here as pizza see this thing now go back to the preliminary ideas that we have discussed i think we have spent 3 4 at least 3 hours on that to talk about whole predicate, the notion of predicate, object, verb and subject, right? Can we call this whole thing predicate? This is part of predicate. But we are saying in the predicate, we have a verb, we have an object which is the complement of this verb, but this is not part of the complement of the verb, okay? So one way, one way was to expand this further okay, and see, say that this n has the pp complement, okay, n has the pp complement and then we go from there, are you with me? But since we are saying this is not part of the object, therefore it does not become the complement of this n. Now, just a moment ago I told you what is the distinction between a complement and adjunct, I am going to talk about that in, a mo in, in uh, I mean the, the following, uh, following discussion is that. But right now, so, so we are not, uh, that simply tells us that we are not making an arbitrary decision that this is not the, comp this is not part of the complement. There is a reason why we are making this decision that this is not a part of the complement. But the question is if it given that it is not part of the complement, how do we represent this in a sentence? Sorry? And so, the, this is what I am telling you that we have this option, we can do this, right? We can say, we can expand this and say a specifier, this one, hold on, hold on, hold on, do not don't write this thing, n and p p, do you see this thing? We can do that, but what we are saying is this is not part of the complement. This is what these people were saying at that, remember? Remember the phrase structure where these people were saying that this V, if, if this PP is part of this complement, then it should only be V and NP. Okay? And then NP can further be expanded as n and pp that that is exactly what their questions question was am i am i am i clarifying that so and they are right i, I said it that that time and i am saying it now also they are, they are right that this is not part of the complement so if it is not part of the complement then this expansion doesn't work and if we represent this pp like this then we are eventually saying this is part of the complement. Get this thing? This distinction, whether something is part of the complement or not, has to be conceptually represented. In other words, these things are categorically clear in human mind. Therefore, their representations are different. How do we make that distinction? Is the is the question. I, I do not want to lose track of what we are actually doing here, we are not just doing some fancy stuff. 
we are talking about, we are still relating this and we want to retain the idea of acquisition, the idea of I language and what we said that how acquisition works at, at the level of human mind, how we have figured out the rules, that is how a child has figured out the rule, it is just a description of what is it that they have figured out. A native speaking, native English speaking child has figured out this rule that in the evening is not part of the complement of this verb. So, in that, in that case, how is it that it is represented? And when it is part of the, when it is part of the complement like here, when we say students of physics, right? So, student and of physics is part of this, is the complement of this student. If it is complement of this, this noun, then we represent it this way. This one, this pp is not the complement of this uh, verb. You, this, this is what you see here. Students of physics, of physics as a pp is part of this. In the evening is not part of the NP. It's, it, it, it looks like that in the phrase structure because there is no other way to represent this in the phrase structure and these things were the problems in phrase structure. Okay? So, here is how we represent this. This is not a, not, not a big deal. It's, we, we only need to find a technical tweaking here. You see why? What, do, you, do you see what we want to distinguish? Yes, yes or no? I, I, I do not want to lose majority of the class. Are you, are you with me? Do you see what, what the distinction that we are trying to make? That distinction will be captured and if there is any confusion, please, please raise your hands and let me know. That distinction is captured also with the help of this intermediate category. The intermediate, the job of the intermediate category is to give us binary branching and also the job is to give us more position. So, what this does actually is it retains, it gives us it give to represent an adjunct what we do is we create one more space okay so with the help of this intermediate category we are not changing anything we are still retaining the whole notion of complement head and complement see this thing we are still retaining spec spec we are still retaining the notion that a spec is higher than the complement, than the head and complement. And we are retaining that the head and complement are in close sister relationship. So, we are not breaking any principle. We are only creating one more space. And then we say this place is adjunct. If, if this was a complement, then we get it this way, equal relationship. If this was not a complement, if this is not a complement, then we just create one more and get it, get it additionally adjoined and not disrupting the, the adjacency between head and the complement, not disturbing the complement itself. Are you with me? Do you see this, see this point? That likes pizza in the evening will be represented this way. Is this representation clear to everybody or do, I, do you want me to draw this thing? You can draw this on your own in your notebook, right? Okay. Before I conclude, I, I want to tell you, uh, I, I told you I am going to talk about uh, the distinction, what makes and how, what makes the distinction between an adjunct and a complement how do we know which phrase is a complement in a sentence and which phrase is an adjunct, we are going to see. 
in, in fact, in fact, we know half of the answer. We know which phrase is a complement, right? When it comes to a verb, the complements are always the objects, right? And additional PPs are going to be uh, adjuncts. Can you look at these phrases? The king of England, student of physics. The next one is a student with long hair. Do you see any distinction between student of physics and a student with long hair? In terms of its meaning. Do you see any distinction between that? Structurally both are same. Student of physics and a student with long hair. What I mean by same is both of them have an NP within a PP within an NP. Okay? But do you see any distinction between the two? Do you, do you feel any distinction between the two? The reason why I am asking you this question is in one case PP is a complement, in the other case the PP is an adjunct. Okay? <coughs> Student of physics with long hair, that is also an NP. Okay? The reason why I am giving you these four phrases is before I talk about the distinction between complement and adjunct to you, please think about these four phrases. When you are thinking about these four phrases, please leave the whole, everything that you know about the language English aside. I, I want to convince you that I am not talking about English. The idea is not to teach you English grammar or for that matter in the Hindi rules or grammar or anything else. The, the idea is to see what is the complement and what is an adjunct in any language. The reason that you are going to find behind these two sentences, the difference between these two sentences is going to apply to all the languages of the world. Okay? So, please think about these four sentences like you have seen what I said about likes pizza in the evening. So, next time we are, discuss, we, go, we are going to discuss two things. We are going to discuss the distinction between complement and adjunct and then we are going to see further up how do we combine subject in the VP to get a sentence, what we called IP. No, not, not a complicated thing. Again, you can see how IP will be drawn right under the X bar. X bar. We only have to see how we, where does VP come and what is the VP complement of in an IP. That is all we are, we are going to say and it is going to be very simple thing and once you realize it is simple, it is going to be fun. <laughs>